Hey guys, so welcome to the JB Nature Walk. And today I'm going to do something different. I'm going to discuss the turkey vulture and what does it represent as an animal totem symbolism and discussing the spiritual meaning of the turkey vulture from my perspective. So the turkey vulture is one of my favorite animals and birds. This is the first animal and bird I've studied. I remember when I was younger, like, I was like 11 or 12 years old, right? And I would study vultures, specifically turkey vultures, for hours in a day, every day. So, me and the turkey vulture go way back, way back. So I'm going to go discuss the, like, what is a vulture, just basic stuff and basic general stuff about what is a vulture and stuff like that. And then we're going to go deeper, further in in the video. Alright, so the turkey vulture is a carrion-eating bird. Carrion is dead animals. So, vultures eat dead animals for a living. They help rid the earth of dead animals that carry different harmful diseases and bacteria that can harm humans and other animals. So that's a big job, guys. So vultures, they are superb cleaners of the earth, if you really think about it. They help us out, and they help the environment and other animals. So they have a big job, a big responsibility. That's that's very important. So vultures help keep the environment and ecosystem healthy. Turkey vultures can be found in all the Americas and the Western Hemisphere. Turkey vultures can fly up to 20,000 feet in the air. They ride the thermals and updrafts to look for and search for carrion. And turkey vultures have superb sense of smell, and they use their sense of smell to, and, and eyesight to look for food. But those are basic general stuff. What else? So I jotted down all my thoughts down. So some things might not be in order, guys. This is something. This is similar to like the frog animal to that I did recently. I have like so much information about these things. So, you can most often see turkey vultures circling majestically in the air. So, turkey vultures can be found in forests, deserts, open countrysides, fields, swamps, mountains, and basically anywhere that have trees. So, turkey vultures can often be found roosting with black vultures. So, these two vultures, the turkey vultures and the black vultures, you can find them roosting together in the eastern part of the United States, southern, like southeastern and eastern United States, because the black birds, they don't live much of the western United States, like right, southern west, but not the western part per se. And because vultures love to roost together, this represents their community side. Vultures are all about the community. That's very important to the vultures, so they're very social, social animals. Even though they don't have a voice box like other birds, they just kind of hiss and grunt, they don't really talk. But because of that, they're still social because they like to roost together. Turkey vultures. So even though they like to roost together, right? But in terms of looking for food, they like to disperse and kind of go on their own. So that's something to keep, um, more specifically the turkey vulture. Now, the black vulture is a lot different. I would do a black vulture animal totem on another video. But we're mainly going to be talking about the turkey vulture. So, turkey vultures love looking for food near roadsides and landfills. So, like I said earlier, they rid the earth of dead animals, right? And those dead animals contain harmful bacteria, right? So, that says a lot about the vulture. The vulture has an immune system, a strong immune system. So people who have the turkey vulture as an animal to them or who are drawn to turkey vultures like I am, you got to pay attention to your immune system. You want to definitely strengthen your immune system because the turkey vulture has a superb immune system. So definitely look into that if you're drawn to the turkey vulture or the, the turkey vulture is an animal to them. Turkey vultures, they get rid of the harmful bacteria, but also, usually in the mornings, they will like sun themselves. And there's a pose they perform, it's called the heraldic pose. 
then the horizon closes when they spread their wings out and they face the sun. So when they do that, the sun, the heat of the sun burns the bacteria, the harmful bacteria that they collected from the carcasses they fed on. That's how they take their baths. But another way they take baths is also to get in the water and just bathe themselves. So they do that too. But usually in the mornings they will do that. They will um, face the sun and spread their wings, burn the harmful bacteria. And that's how they um, cleanse themselves. So people with um, the turkey vulture as a totem definitely um, I know that turkey vultures are quite the, the solar worshippers as I like to say. They definitely um, they rise with the sun. But even at night they, they roost in trees and I think they also let the sun themselves even in the evening when they can. But turkey vultures they rise with the sun. They have to burn Burn the harmful bacteria from their bald heads and feathers, and just disconnect with the sun because they also ride the pheromones that that are created by the sun. So the sun heats up the earth, the hot air rises. That hot air is called pheromones, and they ride those pheromones to to get around and look for food and stuff like that. So that's another thing to. Pay attention if you are a vulture person like me, or you have the vulture as your animal twitter. So turkey vultures are very watchful, intelligent, and conscious. Now here's the thing I want you guys to get from this. So turkey vultures are quite clumsy when walking on the ground. This is tied to not being comfortable when walking on the earth. So vultures, if you even notice them in the wild, they are very clumsy in the ground. And even when you see them flying nice and low, you can tell when they're about to land somewhere. But they circle a lot because they try to inspect and evaluate the environment before they land on the ground. That's because they're not comfortable on the ground. They're not comfortable walking. They kind of hop when they're on the ground. They don't really walk confidently on the earth. So they have to constantly circle and inspect the area before they can land. But they're just not, and this is why they're cautious. They're very watchful and cautious. They're always cautious and watch for everything they do. So before they can do anything on the ground, they have to expect it first. I wrote all my thoughts down about this. So vultures are masters of the air. But when they come back down to the earth, they are very fearful. So vultures are the birds of the heavens. They are tied to planet Neptune. And people who have the trade words as they told them are probably, hobby, are probably highly knowledgeable about different things but they may not have a but they might have a hard time applying their knowledge to to good use in the real world and this is how I tie to when they're always in the air but when it comes to coming back to earth they seem a little they're quite clumsy and fearful like they are like highly knowledgeable in the air. And air is actually tied to knowledge. Air represents knowledge. And that's the mask inside of it. So they're the rules of the air. But when it comes back to the earth, that's when things become a little shaky for them. But they are extremely, extremely knowledgeable about everything. Because they see everything. And they know everything. Because they're the highest flying bird. What else did I say? So because of pe people who are have the turkey word and animal to them, you may need to find ways to feel connected to the earth because the earth is home. The earth is where we live, so we have to find ways to connect with the earth. Find ways where we can feel comfortable with the earth. Because we can't always be in the skies, you know, in the, the, the heavens above, because that's not always realistic. Because we live on Earth, so we gotta find ways to adapt and live on Earth. And turkey voters, they are them they're actually very um adaptable, adaptable creatures. Cause what they do, they clean the earth of dead animals. That's impressive. So they know how to adapt. That's what the turkey voter is trying to tell you if if the turkey voter is the animal to them. Because it's not 
the most as confident as walking on the earth. It has to find a way to make a living on the earth. And because that's what it does, it, it gets rid of the negative energies in the earth. That's, that's how it makes its living. And it's very knowledgeable about everything about the earth because it's always spending a lot of time in the air. It has to make good use of its time to feel comfortable in the earth. So in any profession you guys do, try to find something that's very, that's very, a need-based career. And that's basically, the, the turkey board has a need-based, I would say, a need-based way of, of how it makes living. So I actually learned that. I actually um, applied that, find out about the turkey board to my life. Because I'm in a need... I figured out a way in my life to um, to find a need-based career so I don't have to worry about how to not create that solid foundation that I need to live on Earth. So if you have a turkey vulture to animal totem, you got to find a need-based career where you can just do what you need to do to survive. And that's why it has a red head because it's constantly thinking about what I need to do to survive. So that's another thing of the trigger vulture. You have to think about if it's an animal totem. So trigger vultures only come down to land unless they feel unless they evaluate the space and they feel comfortable enough to land and feel safe. That's what exactly what I was talking about, because they have to evaluate everything before they can do anything, basically. And I always felt like that. Like, you know, because that is not so comfortable on your earth, people can kind of notice that and think of the turkey vulture person as awkward and clumsy. I, I always been kind of accused of that by different people. I don't I never felt like the earth was home. It's like I'm always my head was always in the clouds. But not just always in the clouds, but I was always like thinking about different things and studying different things, but I always had a hard time applying that knowledge. So that's definitely um for Turkey Vulture people you have to find that balance between heaven and earth. Like, don't just study and be this knowledgeable person, but also know how to use and apply that knowledge. And because the turkey vultures like, analyze everything before they do something, the same applies to the vulture person. And because of that, the vulture is tied to planet Saturn. Because Saturn did with practical thinking and analyzing things. And also doing the dirty work so just clean up. And yeah, because no other planet really does deals with cleaning dirty things. No other planet wants to do the dirty work. And that's why I say it's tied to Saturn as well. And all the birds are tied to Neptune because Neptune deals with the heavens. And birds fly, so they're tied to heaven. What else? So I've written down a lot of notes. The turkey vulture also, I like to consider the turkey vulture, at least in the Western Hemisphere, is the authority power. Why did I say this is the authority power? Well, the turkey vulture is the highest flying bird, at least where, from where I'm at right now. The turkey vulture, they can fly 20,000 feet. Now, the condors, they fly higher than that. But 20,000 feet is pretty high, right? So they fly higher than the bald eagle. The bald eagle can fly 20, like 10,000 10, feet. Then, so there's like hierarchies. So the vultures, they fly high, like thousands of feet in the sky, higher than bald eagles and golden eagles and all that. So then the other category is eagles. Then the next category below the eagles is the hawks. And then, and there's different species of hawks. You got the budios and the exhibitors. And the Harriers versus Budios and Inhibitors and Harriers. 
And I'll say the next category is all the falcons. And then it can go to the other birds below the birds of prey. The reason I say they are the, the vultures are the authority powers is because they're the highest flying bird. When you're the highest flying bird, you see everything and you know everything. This is why vultures are the most intelligent. They are above the they are above the eagles and above the hawks and and all the other birds of prey. So vultures, one thing I did forget to tell you guys is they are very, what's the word? Well, I'm going to say one thing. They are very ritualistic birds. When I, what do I mean by ritualistic? Well, the reason I say that is because they have this ritual of coming together after the end of the day. Well, before the end of the day. Now, after they look for food, they come to the trees, they roost together. And they just come back together as one. Because they want to come back and socialize with uh, their other relatives. And also, no, they, they, their roots consist of relatives and friends and stuff like that. So it's all about coming back together. Even though takeaways love their root, they have to look for food by themselves. But at the end of the day, they like to come back together as a family unit. Another thing, too, when they fly... Turkey vultures love to be very resourceful. They love to ride the thermals very efficiently. Like I said, thermals are hot rising air. So they soar on those thermals for hours without flapping their wings. That's very impressive. If you look at the eagles and hawks, they know how to use the thermals efficiently, but they still have to do a lot of flapping. They don't use it as the thermals as efficiently as the turkey vulture does. The turkey vulture is use every ounce of the thermal to his advantage. Eagles and hawks, because of what they do, they have to hunt for their food. Vultures don't, well, they don't have to hunt for anything. They're just looking for carrion. That's the laid back job. Hawks and eagles, they have to do all this flapping to get what they want. And I compare flapping with work. Vultures do not like work. They like to do less work as possible. And they love to circle and ride the thermals to find what they're looking for. Because think about it, looking for carrion, that, that can't be a hard job because like, even if a vulture was flying over a roadside, it's still the same thing. It's like, it's still a lot of work to look for the carrion. They could be miles away until it spots something. But hawks and eagles, they have to constantly dive for their prey and and do all this flapping to gain altitudes again. And it's a lot of work. It's like the vulture doesn't have to do all that. And that's why I say it's the authority power. It's the bird that doesn't have to do any work. It works, but it doesn't have to work as much as the eagles and hawks do. So in my book, the vulture is is the authority power it's 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 the it's the ruler of birds and it's the master of the sky because it does not have to work as hard as the other birds and it's making a living doing it so the vulture teaches us to work smart not hard like the vulture is not about working hard it's about working smart and and i think because it spent a lot of time in the air it thinks about everything it does when the, 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 the other birds, I like to consider the hawks and eagles, they're like tied to management. So, and because it's tied to, they're tied to management, they have to do more work. The vulture relinquishes its control and allows the other bird to do the work while he just does everything else. And that's just to clean up everything and do it at his own leisure. So that's one of the important things I have to say about the turkey vulture. Well, the turkey vulture, you know, it's, I just love it. It's something about the bird that I'm drawn to. And I just had to discuss it, like the spiritual meaning from my perspective. It's very intelligent, it's very watchful, and it's very, um, very cautious about what it does.
those are the key, I would say, key traits or characteristic traits I was I would associate with the turkey vulture. Um, and they, there's so much to to think about in terms of the turkey vulture because there's so much to think about. And the turkey vulture is also the alchemist because it can convert that negative dead energy it consumes from the animals. And you can use that energy to transform it into creating life. Because it can reproduce and create another vulture. That's an alchemist. You transform a negative situation into a positive situation. And that's the key key thing of the turkey vulture. A powerful alchemist. And it's a very resourceful creature indeed. Um, I think that's it. By far, that there, like I said, there's so much to say about the turkey vulture, and I, I can't think of everything on the top of my head right now. But um, yes, the turkey vulture is is an interesting creature. I know a lot of people might frown upon it, but there's so much to look up to it. While, the, while we frown on the vulture, the vulture is looking down on us. I don't think a lot of people think about that, but like I said, the highest flying bird, it sees and knows everything. So let's not forget that. Let's look up to the vulture and go from there. There are also, I want to discuss a few more things about the turkey vulture. So I know I said the turkey vulture has a red head. The red head symbolizes the root chakra. Red is tied to the root chakra, basically. So the turkey vulture animal totem is saying basically to always focus on, I guess, the survival. Like, always working on doing what you need to do to survive. Because the root chakra is always about, and also the root chakra is tied to the earth. I think that's kind of, it reminds the turkey vulture person to always remain connected to the earth. Always, always diligently, diligently, diligently need to work. You always have to find creative ways to sustain yourself. So yes, the red head is, I guess the also the red head is, it could be tied to fire, but new shock is also mainly tied to earth as well. So yeah, the red head is, is always reminding the turkey vulture to remain focused on doing what I need to do to be my foundation. Also just survive in the earth. So from the turkey vulture and to perspective, when you see the red head, think about the root chakra and think about ways on how I can solidify my root chakra. And that's always, you know, with building foundation, work, and stuff like that. Another thing I want to talk discuss also is the trigger vulture rises with the sun, right? I know I've said, like, it rises with the sun by riding on the thermals, it bathe itself by spreading its wings out so the sun can burn the bacteria on itself so the sun is, is masking energy as well and and what's also interesting is the cycle power of the turkey vulture is summer and winter and summer is tied to the sun so if you're if you're drawing the turkey vulture or the turkey vulture animal totem Look into the sun. What does it what does it mean for you? The sun is masculine. The sun deals with productivity, success, having that drive, that fire, you need to do things. So definitely look into that if the turkey if the turkey vulture is your animal totem. <clears throat> what else? Turkey vultures are Quite solitary. 
Yes, they come together at night to roost, but they are quite, they like to spend a lot of time by themselves. So the, the trick board has found a way to find that balance between being social when it needs to, when, it, when it's done feeding, looking for food during the day. But they come together at night so they can communicate and socialize with other vultures. So as a vulture person, that's very important. You need to find that balance between being social and not being social. It's really about that delicate balance the turkey vulture has been doing. It's about finding that balance between the heavens and earth, or being solitary and being social. It's, it's that balance you gotta find. And it's very interesting just thinking about that. Also, another thing I want to show you guys, so I was born in August 8th, so that's one of the main reasons why I probably connect with the vulture. And I, another thing too is, um, like I would, my sun signs in the sun, so that's another thing why I connect with the vulture. I'm in Senate, I, I am in a Senate in Pisces, so I'm also connected with Neptune, the heavens above. So the vulture is all over my chart, basically. So I love the um, the vulture already represents. So yeah, so the key things, look look for the sun. See how it plays a role in your life. What does it mean for you in your life? Because the sun, the turkey vulture is a solar worshiper. It needs the sun, basically, to do, to do anything it does. It uses it to clean itself. It uses it to, to fly around and get around look for food it the sun is is the main thing in his life it needs what else man is the cycle of power is summer and winter so the sun is very important um, so I guess for you Leo's out there like me definitely um if you're drawn to the vulture definitely look into it um and I guess that's it of course the redhead Focus on your root chakra. Focus on solidifying your foundation. Just taking care of your survival needs. Make sure that's in check. And that's what the red hair represents for the vulture. At least from my perspective, that's what it means for me. Um, I guess those are just the key things I just had to tell you guys. I almost forgot about that. You know, I, I wanted to go deeper into that. But it, definitely the root chakra and the red head. And the sun and it's all masculine energy, so definitely, definitely dive deep into that. And that's it. That's all I want to share with you guys. That's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching today's video with JV's Nature Walk, the Turkey Vulture Animal Totem Symbolism and Meeting. This is. A video I wanted to do for the longest time, and I'm glad I did it. Like I said, there was so much info about the Turkey Vulture. There's probably more stuff I wanted to say, but I just couldn't remember what to, what to say at the time. But yes, thank you guys for tuning in to JJB's Nature Walk, and I'll see you guys next week. Have a wonderful day.